Starting from yesterday, Seoji spoke about how the physical and mental phenomena in the yogi's body occur as cause and effect. And Seoji started to speak about how this occurs in practical terms. Among uh, as far as mental causes go, uh, sorry, mental results go, uh, only when there's an object does nama or mentality occur. Uh, it won't occur without an object. It depends on the object. So yesterday, Sierraji spoke about how the... Um, how due to the physical object nama occurs. And he spoke about how the the physical object, the, the physicality occurs due to nama. When one sees clearly rupa and nama, the physical and the mental, one sees their cause for arising with one's knowledge. One comes to know how this occurs in stages. So yesterday uh, he spoke about how mentality occurs due to physicality. And he also started to speak about how the mind gives rise to the physical. And he will continue this today. To elaborate on what Sieroji said yesterday, to expand on this, Sieroji said that because of the mind, citta, physicality, rupa, occurs in a series. So first of all, there's a mind which causes physicality. Whenever there is bending, stretching, sitting down, standing up, opening and closing the eyes, blinking, this mental cause is very obvious. For those who practice respectfully, continuously, without taking a break, cherishing the results of the Satipatthana practice, for them this, uh, this knowledge occurs in a few days. To the extent that one practices respectfully, the results come. The intention to sit, stand, uh, bend, stretch, and so on is very evident. This is called katukamyata citta, the mind that wants to do. And the yogis come to know this naturally as soon as that intention to do something arises, one's mind is aware of it, and then the physical series of sitting down or standing up, bending or stretching, all movement, well, the yogi comes to see that all movement occurs due to this intention, the mind that wants to do something. One comes to know this not through reading about it, not through hearing about it, but through directly through one's own experience. One sees it directly. If the intention to sit down, stand up, and stretch, and so on, is there, sitting down, standing up, bending, and stretching will occur. The intention is the cause. Because of this intention, the, there is a result, a physical result, such as sitting down, standing up, bending and stretching. One sees this with one's own eyes. And yesterday, Sierraji mentioned this. In the body, why is it that there is physical, uh, physical bending, physical stretching, the physical act of sitting down or standing up, blinking the eyes, the physical opening or closing of the eyes. 
Why is it that all the time there are physical events happening in one's body? If we just think about this in an ordinary way, we can, we can guess that it's because there's the desire to do those things. And this is apparent just when we think about it in an ordinary way. But this thinking about it is not one's own knowledge. Because one observes every arising object, one comes to see how the intention gives rise to the effect of the intention to bend gives rise to bending, for example. This is called pachakanyana. It's what we see with our very own eyes. And without end, there's, there are all these um, intention to bend, intention to stretch, intention to sit up, to, st- to sit down, to stand up. Uh, that mind that wants to do is occurring uh, all the time. So what is this uh, intention to do something? What is this mind that wants to do? Is it a creator? Is it a supreme being? It's just mentality. It's just a natural dhamma, a natural phenomena. It's not a creator. It's not a supreme being. In this nama, in mentality, there is no paramaatta, no supreme being. What is there is just the intention to sit down, the intention to stand up, to bend, to stretch, and so on. When one knows clearly that bending, stretching, and so on all occur due to a cause, they, it's not that they don't have a cause, they have a cause. One sees this clearly, and thus one eliminates ahetuka deti, the, mis, uh, the, the wrong uh, view that there is no cause to anything we experience. This is, of course, permanently uprooted at the stage of sotapanna. One who really practices seriously sees, sees this truth clearly and can see, can see it in seven days. So Sayadoji has to urge the yogis to stand up slowly, sit down slowly, do every action so that the mind can keep up with it. Practice respectfully, carefully, without a break. But he can't help the fact that the yogis don't do as he says. Uh, he's, he's done what he can. So when one sees how nama causes rupa, one sees that the intention to bend leads to the physical act of bending. It leads to these, to the physicality which bends. It doesn't lead to stretching. And one sees that the intention to stretch leads to the stretching, the physicality of stretching, not to bending. One sees, similarly, intention to sitting leads only to sitting down. It doesn't, uh, doesn't lead to another action. Intention to stand up leads only to standing up, not to some other action. So one understands clearly that each result has its own cause. When people don't see this, they insert a cause. That There's a creator doing this. So this is what people believe, usually. And it's a false view. It's a false belief that occurs due to knowing wrongly, not knowing clearly about cause and effect. If one knows wrongly, then one's belief will also be in error.
As long as one doesn't know that results come about due to causes, as long as one doesn't see dhammas that are resultant uh, in terms of their causes, then one thinks, because of this knowing, the belief that there is no cause to one's experience arises. And it's because knowing, uh, when our knowing is in error, our belief also errs. So it follows that when one knows correctly, uh, belief will, one's belief will also be correct. So to know correctly, one can't gain this correct knowledge through reading, nor by thinking about something we've read. Although to some extent faith can occur when we read or think about what we've read. And we also can't, can't gain correct knowledge through scientific experiment. One needs to do self-research with Satipatthana practice. Doing this, one comes to see as if with one's own eyes. Pachakanyana. We don't see with our eyes, but it's like seeing with our eyes. We see true cause and true result, true effect. And when we see this, the view that things are causeless, ahituka deti, is eliminated. But until, uh, until we see how relevant causes lead to relevant effects, then one will think there's a creator that is causing things. Like a, a big master of things, or Maha Brahma, the great Brahma. One takes these things which are not the cause for what we experience to be the cause. And this is called Visamahetuka Deti. Ordinary people have both this view that things are causeless, ahituka deti, and also they uh, also believe that uh, believe in false causes or irrelevant causes, visamahetuka deti. And this is what happens until one sees that relevant causes lead to relevant effects. This occurs in monks who study but don't practice. This occurs in those who do samatha, but not vipassana. And with practice, we can come to see this directly, this truth. And we have a lot of opportunities to see this. And when we see how relevant cause leads to relevant effect, then the view that a creator uh, created our experience is isvara nemanawada. Uh, isra is the word for a creator, and nemana means uh, he or she created. The view that uh, a creator created, created things will be eliminated when we see relevant cause leads to relevant effect. Those who like the idea that uh, of this Esra Nemanawada, that um, the Creator being created things, they wrote in uh, many things in the texts, the old old texts of the past. And in Sanskrit, there is a text called Neya, N-E-Y-Y-A, and it describes. Um, how there are two types of atta or self. It says esero siwata. So this uh, one is this jiva atta is the life that is in each being, each living being. And esero means uh, refers to this. In Pali, we call it parama atta, or the creator being. This creator, Esra, or Param- Paramatta, created 
all humans, all, all living beings, everything non-living, created everything in the world. And this creator rules his creation, his or her creation. Um, and in Pali we call this Paramahata, which means supreme being. There's none bigger than this one. This supreme being is also called, uh, described in the Sanskrit text as Sabanyu. That means omniscient. He, he, he or she, uh, not, I think he has no gender, uh, knows everything. This Paramahata knows everything that there is to be known. Eko Eva, there's just one. And this supreme being doesn't experience any happiness or any suffering and has no form. So it said Sukha Dukkha Rihito. So this is how the Parama Atta, the Supreme Being, is described in the Sanskrit texts. And those who have this type of belief in a Supreme Being that rules the world and knows all without uh, any type of suffering or happiness and no form, they get this idea from the Sanskrit texts. This is where it, where it The Buddha denied what these people said. Uh, just as there is no jiva atta, no individual soul, also there is no parama atta, no supreme being. He said, anatta, there is no such thing as atta. There is no such thing as either of these two attas. So one, when one sees clearly how our experience is nama and rupa, the physical and mental occurring as a pair, one sees that there's, there's no atta in there. There's just mind and matter. And there's no parama atta either. These things uh, don't occur without a cause. In the stream of nama and rupa, the mental and physical experience that we call existence or life, there is no atta, no self to be found. And <clears throat> this view is, of course, completely eliminated at the stage of realizing this, the first uh, realization of Nibbana, Sotapati path. And when we see that causes give rise to effect, we see that we aren't the creation of a supreme being. We're not following a supreme being's will. We just experience results that occur due to causes. So this, um, the belief, our belief in, in a supreme being is eliminated, eliminated on a part-time basis, but it's completely uprooted to the point of no return at the stage of Sotapati path. It's said that uh, when this knowledge of cause and effect is, uh, comes to fulfillment, it's said that one who sees that each thing occurs due to its cause gains relief, breathes easily in the teaching of the Buddha. Imina jnanena samanagato vipasako bodhasasane Vadasato. One who has this knowledge, the yogi who has this knowledge, breathes easily in the teaching of the Buddha. And why this is, is because before this knowledge arises, where, where one sees cause and effect, clearly that each thing occurs to its own, occurs due to its own cause then various thoughts come in to one's mind. For example, if we believed in a god, 
then we think God is going to punish me. We think that way because we've believed in a God in the past. So there's space for wrong, uh, for us to think about wrong causes, and therefore we feel tense because of this, of this concern before we see clearly. And it's like um, having to live with a tiger. And I think what Sayadaji said is like if you pull the tiger's tail, then you have to face the tiger. So you, one doesn't feel very comfortable in that situation. So there are many beliefs that come in until one knows clearly about cause and effect that each, uh, that effects come about due to relevant causes. But when one gains this knowledge also, not a potato, it said, one gains a foothold. So one sees that nama rupa occurs due to their own causes. So one breathes, breathes easily at this point and one has something to stand on. And it's said when one gains this knowledge that one, where one is going to in the next life is certain. It's certain that one will not go down to a lower existence. This is in Pali, Niyata Gatiko. And when one is a Sodapana, then one becomes completely free of the potential for rebirth in the four lower realms of Apaya, the unhappy realms. But with this, um, with this knowledge of cause and effect, in one's next lifetime, one will have happy conditions. And thus, one who has the knowledge of cause and effect is called a lesser Sotapanna a minor stream winner because they gain this happy lifetime. And uh, if one gets this knowledge of cause and effect, which is praised in the ways that Sayadaji has just mentioned, when one continues one's practice from that point, Vipassana knowledge is sure to arise in stages. From time to time, a yogi may be just noting in an ordinary way, superficially. And at that time, laziness and the wandering mind strike. uh, The mind starts to move about. And if one doesn't note this right when this wandering starts to happen, this mental factor of manasikara goes to objects outside of one's body and mind and starts to, and then various thoughts, plans, fantasies, and so on, arise. And one's thinking continues. This is due to the activity of manasikara, which is a mental quality, nama. And This thinking and planning is also nama. It occurs due to the the manasikara, which is also nama, mental. If we note the thinking, one is also noting nama or noting mentality. And when we note it, we can see that it is due to um, the manasikara that the mental object arises. In one's body, there are various objects that are all going on at the same time. Sometimes one doesn't know what to note. So the mind goes to something. The mind goes sometimes to hearing, or it goes to a seeing, or to a pain, or ache, hardness. And one doesn't know what to do about it. So, uh, sometimes pain is ordinary, sometimes pain is extraordinary, extreme, and itching is similar. It, sometimes it happens in a, in a very ordinary way, and sometimes it happens, it feels very extreme. 
So, uh, where should the mind go? The mind goes to the most obvious object. Tends to, there's a mental quality. The mental quality of Manasikara is what steers the mind. It's like an arrow that directs the mind. So it directs the mind to the most obvious object. So this, um, and this is a mental quality. So there are two causes for us to look at an object, to uh, take, uh, for the mind to take an object. One is the object is very prominent. It's extreme. It's extraordinary. And the other cause is that this quality of Manasikara steers, steers the mind to that object. So one can imagine, okay, what would be happening if we were at a festival? And at one point, at the same time, we're seeing something and looking at a view or looking at a show. We're hearing something. We're eating something. We're sitting down comfortably. So in this situation, there are many objects that could be observed. One's mind tends to go to what one's, one likes or um, to what is extreme or what interests one. And it's the arrow of the mind, this quality of manasikara that steers the mind. So thinking occurs due to manasikara, thinking about this or that. And this is, the thinking itself is mental, nama. Manasikara, the mental quality that steers the mind, is also nama, or mental. So this is a case of nama causing nama. And Sayadaji will have to continue this tomorrow because the hour is up. That's all for today. Sadi, 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 Sadi.